All right, today what we want to do is go over a couple of things about the class that you should already know. We have no one new in the uh, sixth grade or the seventh grade. So the grading that we the scale we did last year is basically the same. And what the rules are from last year are definitely the same. Because if there's one thing about me that's consistent, okay, is that the rules are the rules and they don't change. All right, but the grading scale is a little bit different. Uh, for one thing, we don't have Alex anymore. And what we have instead of Alex is we have IXL. All right, so that's going to be the main difference, and it's going to adjust the grades just a little bit. Now, we still start with constructed responses. You will still have constructed responses about once a week. Uh, your textbook this year, we got a new textbook this year, and your textbook this year has constructed responses all through it. But I will most probably pick one constructed response a week like I did before, and I will give you the whole week to work on it. All right, and again, I will grade it, and it will count as 5% of your final grade. All right, I hope you can see the board. Uh, I haven't done it this way before, but I was giving it a try. Now. Again, the second thing is IXL, which you should be very familiar with from last year when we did distance learning, okay, because you had a lot of assignments from IXL, all right? And again, you'll notice last year, or you might remember last year, Alex was only 5%, but IXL is 15%. And by the way, the way I get your grade on IXL is not by how much time you spend, but what percent you get correct. And as you know from last year, you can keep working on IXL and go back on it and go back on it till you get 100%. So there's no reason why you should not get 100% on IXL if you really take it serious and you work hard. By the way, if you ever have any trouble with the constructed response or with IXL, okay, you can, add, you can ask and I'll try to help you with it. All right. Uh, it's, I was going to say you could come in the morning and ask, but unfortunately, no one can come to school till 7.30, and everyone in the class has to be in the class at 7.30. So I can't help you individually right now. Hopefully later on I will be able to help you. But if you ask questions to me in the morning at 7.30, I can try to answer them for you. All right, only my home room or maybe in the hallway, I don't know. I, I guess I can. It's hard to get used to that. Now, you'll notice that last year homework was 31% of your grade, and this year it's only 20%. And you go, yes, I don't have to do my homework. Well, the problem is sometimes your homework is going to be IXL. So when you add the homework and the IXL together, okay, you get 35%. And again, that's more than one-third of your grade. And by the way, if you don't take IXL and homework seriously, you won't pass the class because the, if you don't get that 35%, the highest grade you can get is a 65. So you have to do IXL and you have to do homework. The next thing up here is quizzes. And again, I try to give as many quizzes as I can because that's my way to find out if you really understand what you're doing or not. I learned a, time, a long time ago, if I ask you if you understand, you always say yes. And if I ask you, do you have any questions, you always say no. But when I give you a quiz, suddenly, wait, you didn't really understand. Or wait, why didn't they ask that question? They didn't know how to do it. So the purpose of quizzes is not to determine your grade. It's only 10% of your grade. But the purpose of the quizzes is to make sure that you understand the material by seeing that you understand the material, okay? By the way, as you already know, to get a grade on your quizzes after four quizzes on the fourth day you do corrections I'm sorry after four quizzes on the fifth day you do corrections and again if you get a hundred on your corrections you'll get a hundred for that grade by the way I always give you the right answers for every quiz and I always go over any questions you have on any quiz so there's no reason why you shouldn't understand or be able to do your corrections correctly. By the way, for those people who are at home doing uh, 
at home learning, uh, I most probably will send you a video with the corrections on it. Now, the next thing is test. I usually try to give somewhere between three and five tests in nine weeks. I do not give a test every week. I give a test when I feel you're ready to take one. And what tells me you're ready to take a test? Your quizzes. When you start doing good on the quizzes, then we stop and we take a test. All right. And the tests are the thing that's the highest percentage, 40%. But again, you have three or four tests, so or five tests. So that makes each test only really worth about somewhere between 13% and 8%. Now, as far as the exam goes, that's a big one that people get it all worked up about, but it's only worth 10%. And again, it's about as worth as one test would be worth. Okay, and again, that's all an exam is, is a big test. By the way, I believe very strongly in exams because in math, I think you always have to stop and go back over the stuff you learn. Because in math, if you don't use it, you lose it. So again, at the end of each nine weeks, you'll take an exam. Now my exams are what are called cumulative. And what that means is it covers everything you've learned. In the end of the first nine weeks, it covers everything you learned from the first day of school to the end of the first nine weeks. At the end of the second nine weeks, it covers everything you learned from the first day of school to the second nine weeks, end of the second nine weeks. At the end of the third nine weeks, it, co it covers everything you learned in school from the first day of school to the end of the third nine weeks. And your final exam covers everything you learned in school from the first day of school to the last day of school. And you go, oh God, that's going to be so hard. But the truth is, in math, math is cumulative. You can't add fractions if you don't know how to add whole numbers. You can't add decimals if you don't know how to add whole numbers. So everything builds on top of each other in math. So again, when you look and you want to know how are you going to get a good grade, okay, it starts by taking IXL and homework seriously. Because as long as you do it, and do it with the rules that you're supposed to have, it's impossible to fail. Now, the next thing you can worry about is quiz corrections, because if you do all your quiz corrections correctly, your quiz average will be 100. But more importantly, if you do all your quiz corrections correctly, you'll understand how to do it, and that'll mean your test grades will be high. All right? So again, you concentrate on IXL homework and quizzes, and you won't have to worry about tests or exams because these things are where you learn the stuff that you do in these things. So again, the good news is if you always do your homework the way you're supposed to do it, when you're supposed to do it, that includes IXL now, you're, it's impossible to fail. But if you never do your homework the way you're supposed to do it, when you're supposed to do it, it's impossible to pass. Okay, and that's mathematical because if 35% of it is not in there, the highest grade you can get is a 65. So what's the moral to the story? Do your homework. All right. Now, notice when I said always do your homework, I didn't just say do your homework. Everyone does homework. They go home when they do something. Okay, but you have to do your homework the way you're supposed to do it when you're supposed to do it. So the next thing we have to look at is the rules for homework, all right? And again, as far as the rules for homework go, I only have three, okay? But if they are written in stone. If you don't do them, you will not get credit for your homework. And again, these are not new. This is exactly what they've been last year and the year before. And all 40 years are all 30-something years I've been here and all 40 years I've been teaching. The truth is, when I first started, I had 10 rules, the 10 commandments of my class. I learned that you couldn't follow 10 rules, so I knocked it down to three. And some people can't follow the three. But anyway, the first rule is do all problems assigned. And that's very important. If I assign 1 through 20, I don't want you to do 1 through 19. I want you to do 1 through 20. And again, you say, but Mr. Du, if I just don't do one problem, I don't get any credit at all. And you say, and I say, that's right. And you say, but Mr. Du, that's not fair. And I say, it is fair because I'm telling you right now, if you don't do all problems, you won't get any credit. 
So make sure you do every problem assigned. Okay, I've had parents come to me before and say, I can't believe you took off total credit because my child just didn't do one problem. And my answer is, I can't believe your child didn't do one problem. Why would you do 1 through 19 if I assign 1 through 20? Secondly, the second rule is you must write the problem and show your work. Now, if it's in a workbook, uh, you don't have to write the problem, but you always have to show all work. By the way, this year, different than other years, you have both a workbook and a textbook, all right, because we went with a new series. So, again, if I don't see the problem and if I don't see the work, you don't get credit for the answer. Now, you say, what if I did the work in my head? Well, if it's a problem you can do in your head, then you don't have any work to show. But please don't tell me you can do 239 times 43 in your head. If you could do 239 times 43 in your head, then you shouldn't be in this classroom. You most probably should be on some talk show for uh, genius children or something like that. Okay. But again, if I have to do work to get the answer, you have to do work to get the answer. And the third thing is be relatively neat. And basically what that means is I have to be able to read your work and find your work, which means if, you have, if you're doing it on loose leaf, you have to number the problems, okay? So again, there are only three rules, but they are etched in stone. If you don't follow them, you wasted your time doing your homework. You might as well not do it at all if you're not gonna do it right. And again, do all problems assigned, write the problem and show all work, and be relatively neat, okay? So that's the rules for homework. Now, the other set of rules that are important are the rules for corrections, because like I told you already, if you do all your corrections correctly, then you can change your quiz grade to 100, your average to 100. Whether you got zeros, 20s, and 10s on all the quizzes, your average would still turn out to be 100. So you need to know the rules for quizzes. So these are the rules for quizzes. And by the way, when you look at the rules for quizzes, they will look kind of familiar to you because they look an awful lot like the rules I just talked about. Okay? Rule number one, on a separate sheet of paper, not on the quiz itself, but on a sec separate sheet of paper, do all problems you got wrong. And again, don't do the problems you got right. The purpose of corrections is not to punish you, it's so you can learn from your mistakes. And you don't need to learn anything on something you got right, you got to learn what you got wrong. Okay, so that's the first thing. On a separate sheet of paper, do every problem you got wrong. Number two, write the problem and show the correct work. And again, notice, write the problem again. This time you do have to write the problem and notice show uh, the correct work. Not just all work, but the correct work. Because you might say, well, Mr. Du, how would I get the right answer if I had the wrong work? Because I write the answers on the board. Every time I give you back a quiz, the first thing I say is, these are the correct answers, write the correct answer down so that when you do your corrections, you can do them correctly. So again, you'll know the correct answer, but you better know the correct work to get the answer. And finally, you must have the correct answer. And how could you not have the correct answer if you copy it off on the board when I gave it to you? And again, you say, but Mr. Du, what if I know what the correct answer is supposed to be, but I don't know how to get the correct work? And I say, the next thing I say after I write all the answers on the board is, do you have any questions? So if you don't know how to get the correct work, then you raise your hand and you ask, all right? And, I can correct, and I'll correct it for you. So again, that's the things that you need to know. Number one, where your grade comes from. Number two, the rules for your homework. And number three, the rules for corrections. By the way, I, this is a video, so I'm kind of talking a little faster than I would in class, okay? But uh, I want you to have all of this stuff in your binder, okay, for math. And again, if it's, <clears throat> excuse me, if you didn't get to copy it all down just now in your binder, that's all right, because what you can do is you can go back and relook at the video.
and maybe you'll hear something the second time that you didn't hear the first time. All right, and the people here that are in at home learning, okay, uh, this is nothing new for you. I will say this, when you send me your homework, okay, you're gonna have to most probably send your homework, uh, excuse me, you almost probably have to send your homework either in a uh, scan it or take a picture of it to send it. All right, uh, I'm not really sure. Or if your parents could come by and drop it off at school, that would work out too. But uh, we'll talk more about that uh, later on. By the way, uh, the people in the seventh grade homeschooling, uh, you all are gonna take a quiz today and then your corrections will be starting tomorrow, okay? And when you take a quiz, you write your answers on the answer sheet and just send the answers in, just like we did last year when we did our school learning for everyone. All right, uh, this is new because of the situation we're in, but we'll work it out the best that we can, all right?